Hello, Robbie here from Save Stores, and I'm gonna do things a little bit different. Today, I'm gonna do a sew along. And what I wanna do is give everyone a little sneak peek of what we do at our Kimberbell events so that you can get an idea of what to expect. When you log in, we do do them over Zoom, not Facebook. Um, but you can see the different camera angles and the different things that we have. So when you sign up for a Kimberbell event at Save Stores, you're gonna get a bag. And inside of this bag are some tools, some little uh, tape, all the little Kimber embellishments, all the things that we absolutely love about Kimberbell, fabric, a special pin for doing the event, a memory stick with lanyard. Some of these are a little older and they're on CDs. If they are on CDs, uh, we do have memory sticks available or you can bring your stick in and we'll put them on. And what we're gonna do this time is we're gonna throw in the stabilizer that you need to. So before the event, what I like to have people do is maybe log into Zoom and kind of familiarize yourself with that. Um, if you are new to Zoom, you can definitely call us up. Our Zoom room is fixed. So every event, it's the exact same. We just change the password uh, to get into the Zoom room. So very, very, very easy. But before the event, I like to have you open this up and just kind of take a look. And inside, you're going to find a book here. And this is not the event that we're doing, but a little book. And inside the book are little directions. And they're very, very, very clear of everything that we do. But don't worry, because we're going to do these right along with you. So this is going to be very easy. But one of the things that I especially love about what Kimberbell does is if you see here, there's a little picture of a machine. Can you see that? And they're the machine steps. So they're going to show you things that you maybe have to do with your hands or with scissors to do things to get it, the project totally finished. But they also show you the machine steps. So you can always look back and if you ever fi can't figure out what you did, find the last thing that you did with the machine step and then the next machine step is what you're gonna do, it's super easy. But the best part is, you don't have to worry about this, we're gonna be right along with you. Uh, so with that, we're gonna get started on how this all works. So I'm gonna jump over to my other camera here in a minute and uh, walk you through how this project that we're gonna do, it's a fun one, you're gonna watch it, so I'll meet you over at my cutting table. So here we are at our cutting table and We've got uh, the stabilizer that we need, and we would have given this to you. So this one needs a wash away stabilizer. And for most of the Kimberbell designs, they uh, do have some 5x7 ones. Almost all of them will fit in a 6x10. I know a lot of us have much bigger machines uh, that have bigger hoops than this. But this is a great entry for some of those midline embroidery machines on up that you can use a 6x10. Uh, uh, so if you don't have one of these before the event, I do recommend getting them. They're handy for the little bit bigger but still smaller designs to give you a nice place to, uh, to work with. So right now, let me move some of these rulers. Oh, and you're gonna get a little demo of those when we do our event. Those are, those are incredible. So I'm gonna pop this out and hoop this up. And you can see here, and this is exactly what we're gonna do is hoop right alongside of you and show you how much fun and easy all of this is. I'm gonna tighten it up here and make sure that we're pretty good with our stabilizer. And again, this is water soluble. And what's neat about this stuff is it uh, kind of embroiders like a fabric. It's a nice uh, stabilizer, but when you wash it away, it completely vanishes. So this is great uh, if you're gonna do patches, if you're gonna do like kind of what we're gonna do, which is a little, uh, well, it, it'll be a mystery. You'll have to watch but you're gonna love it. Uh, it's kind of funny too. Uh, but it's a great uh, stabilizer for towels that you don't want anything on the back of the towel when you're done. Um, and it just melts away with water. So we're gonna take this now that we have our hoop and we're gonna load it on our machine. So now this easy, we are over here and let me open up our machine. And I will come in here, I will open up our design, and are we on our screen here? Perfect. So I will open up, and right there is what we're gonna do today. And I'm gonna hit set and embroider, and we are ready to rock. And kind of what the machine steps are, 
Um, if you want to think about it, and it's not a hard and fast rule, but machine step one, it's kind of the color number. So if you look at what color you are, I'm here on a Luminaire, which is uh, one, of, one, of my, one of my favorite machines, but I have a lot of favorites. Uh, it happens to be my brother. But I'm going to pull this up here, and I'm going to thread this baby up, and we're going to do machine step one. And what that is, is a placement stitch. So I'm going to jump in here, and we are going to get going. I'm going to use a darker color for this because I want the camera to be able to see what we're doing. But usually when I uh, do these placement and tack down, I try and match the color of the actual tack down in case it shifts or anything moves while we're uh, doing our projects. That way, if it, if it is visible, you don't notice it as much because it kind of blends in with the rest of the thread. Um, one thing that's a little different about how Kimberbell does this is uh, we're going to trim all of this stuff uh, later in the project. So I've done a lot of in the hoops is what they call these. And usually when you do this, uh, we do our trimming as we go. But for this, we aren't. So right now we have a placement line. And I'm just going to take my batting here and I'm just going to cover that up. And then I'm going to tell you, you get this uh, free tape included with uh, this project and use it. It's water soluble, so it will melt out of the way. But it's just a good way to hold things in place while we're sewing so that things, accidents don't happen. Um, which, uh, you know, it's sewing. We're having fun. They will. But you know what? There's always a way out. And I will tell you during our event, uh, if you have any questions or need us to speed up or slow down or anything, uh, you can comment in there or uh, we can reach out to you via email or on the phone. So now I'm going to go in and I'm going to tack down or sew down this batting. And all I did was cover everything that it stitched before. So with this, uh, we're going to have a top and a back and we just picked different colors. The real one uh, that we did in the event was the same color on both sides. but. Uh, we're going to do this. So I'm going to do the yellow for the top because I think the words and the images are going to show up better. And I'm going to do the blue on the back, um, which is going to be pretty, pretty cool. So now it is going to tack this down and sew around the outside. So you can see here the tape that I uh, put on here. It helps to hold it down so that as the machine moves, it doesn't jump and bounce around, um, which is really, really handy. Um, I'm so glad they give us uh, this, but we do sell it in the store. So if you see anything that I do here in the video and you have questions about or want to know more information, uh, you can leave a comment down below or you can call the store. The number is 503-775-7283. So here we are. Oh, and it cut the stitches for us. Look at that. So now, it's going to do a placement line for our top fabric. So we're going to sit here and we are going to let this go. And now it's going to show us where this fabric needs to go to make sure that it's fully covered. And this is so much fun. I love this. And I would say, you know, I'm not using the color they recommend. And for these tack downs, they usually don't match what you're using. But it's so much fun to get in here and really play with the different colors. Uh, it always brings a smile to my face. So I hope it does you as well. So here we go. It now showed me where to put my top, top fabric here. And I'm just going to cover the same thing I did with the other one. And I'm going to tape again. Now, some people say I'm tape crazy. But this tape is so cheap, and it's a lot easier to prep your work better beforehand than it is to have a boo-boo and then have to start over from scratch and throw everything away. And I look at it, needles, tape, a little bit of extra stabilizer. You know, I always think to myself, did I use enough stabilizer? If, if I think the answer might be maybe or no, I'll always slide another piece underneath there just to be sure. Because it's always easier to do that than it is to get it all done, have it looking good, pop it out, and it all looks all, looks all weird. Nobody wants that. So here we go. 
and we are doing our tack down for our top fabric. And remember, this one is gonna be a little bit different. So normally when I do these projects from other, uh, other brands, we'll just say, we kind of trim away as we go. And with this, we're actually gonna do it at the end. And there's a very specific reason for that. And I'm gonna show you when we get done why, but it makes sure that everything lines up perfect at the end. You're gonna love it. So here we go. And this purple, I was a little worried about the purple looking good on this yellow. And I'm gonna say it looks pretty nice. So I'm pretty excited about this. But uh, during these events, we go through uh, while the machine is sewing, uh, if you can hit uh, camera three and then turn on the uh, picture in a picture, you will see us over here doing samples and demos and all kinds of things. But if you look in the top corner here, you will notice that it's actually sewing along so that you can follow along with our progress so you know that we're doing exactly what you're doing as we work through these projects together. So I just heard my machine make a noise, so I am ready to move on to my next step, which is going to be my leaves. So I am going to do a rethread here. And I got to I got to tell you, are you zoomed in on this, Tim? Can you can you bring it in here? I want to show him the uh, the needle threader on this machine because it is it is something special. So I'm just going to do this. Most machines you go down, up, down. And then we go through our little threader here. But I'm going to show you. Are, you. are you zoomed in here? So here's our little threader. I have it unthreaded. And I'm just going to hit my uh, threader button here. And it is going to thread my needle. It's all threaded. It's so easy. I'm going to do that one more time so you guys can see this because it, it, it's, it's incredible. I just push the threader button, comes down and it threaded it. That easy. So when we're doing these projects, and some of them have a lot of thread colors, uh, these little things that they have just make them so much easier to use. So I'm going to start sewing, and now we're doing our leaves. So if you want to come over here. I was talking earlier about the machine steps, and do you want to hit the on so they can see the perfect. So the machine steps up here uh, on this machine, it's got our size in inches, which I really, really like. It's got our stitch count, but these are the colors, and it's telling us what number we're at out of how many. And I will tell you almost every brand. Um, I happen to be at a brother, but I sell Br uh, Bernina, Baby Lock, Janome. You know, there's a lot of different brands out there, and we don't discriminate. We love them all. But uh, this one is just happens to be the best at what she does, so I love it. But uh, it's got a, whoops, and I touched the screen there. We'll get her going. But this is our uh, stitch number, and it's telling us our steps. So if I was going through my book here, and I'm going to hold it up here. Can you see that clearly? So you can see the different steps. So they walk you through, and they show you when to change threads, and when to do all of these steps. So they really walk you through. And this is even, ooh, this is sewing vinyl on. And actually, ah, speak of the devil, there is that one. I didn't realize that before we started. Can you see that, Tim? So there is literally us sewing out the bag. And these pinwheels were all done. There's fabric in there, all done in the hoop. I love it. And this is one of the Kimberbell bags. They're awesome. They're just a lot of fun. But uh, these directions would line up exactly with that. And right now, you can see how much time we have left uh, going through our project here. And we're almost ready to uh, change to our next color, which I really like. And this right here shows us our little bar of how far along through the color we are. So now we're going to do our flowers. So I am going to do pink flowers because I like pink flowers. And again, we're just going to run through here and do our that needle threader. Huh. What a. What a treat. And here we go, doing our flowers. And we're sewing right through that, uh, the batting, the stabilizer, and the top fabric, no problem. And I just love how quiet this machine is as well. Now, one of the things that's really neat about a lot of the newer machines is they cut the jump stitches. So can you bring it in here real close, 
temp. And I want to show you what that means. So when it shows a color, and this could be a letter, a color, a part of a design, you're going to see that normally when it moves from one area to the next, there's a thread that's left behind. And you're going to see this lift up, jog out of the way, cut, and then pull that tail and start over fresh. And this is one of the things that's a little more unique to the brother and the baby lock models is that they have what's called a wiper. Um, and what that means is not only does it cut the threads, but it actually pulls the tail out. And you'll actually see this little bar come up. And what it's doing is actually pulling that tail out so that it fully finishes it. And then when it starts at the new spot, it actually buries that tail underneath. So you never see it. Um, I know in some of the earlier models of uh, embroidery, they would say that they cut the jump stitches. But when you were done with your project, you had a whole bunch of these little whiskers, I call them, where they uh, sat around on the project and you saw a uh, little spike sticking up. And Brother really took this from their industrial machines where on the big, big multi-needle machines, they have a, a wiper and it actually comes down and, and grabs that thread. Um, so they, they took that same approach here on their, on their top of the line machine here, which, which I like. I like things that make it easy. Easy to me is fun. So along with these events, if you wanna maybe uh, just zoom it out, we're gonna email you a buying guide so that all the stuff that we talk about during the event, you're gonna have a little sheet here. You can put your name, your phone number, your email, and as we're talking about it, you can see the show special price, uh, the item and how much you're saving and anything that you buy by the following Tuesday after the event That's when Brie comes back from work. She has Monday off uh, And we will put our orders in on Tuesday So as long as we get the sheets in before we do our order They give us a discount when we buy in bulk and we just pass that right along to you So it's kind of a special bonus uh, I know Kimber Bell's a big thing. They have a lot of different projects a lot of different items and any of those that you buy, if there's something in their catalog, which is also up here in the email, and if you open this uh, either in your web browser or in uh, Adobe, uh, it'll link right to the Kimberbell website, and it's an updated catalog. So you can go through and you can maybe find other items. Any of those will be discounted as well, um, and you can fill them out and put them on your order as well. So. Um, anything that you get during the event or the next couple days after, you're going to get massive discounts on. So it's a great time to load up. Plus, you're going to see things that are new, maybe some stuff that you haven't seen before. And it's a great way to kind of get, get in on the action and save some money at the same time. So a lot of fun. Um, so this will be emailed. You can print it off. If uh, you have difficulty with that, we can print it off for you. Um, I actually like it digital because, uh, well, it's easy, you can click the link, you don't have to try and type all that, all that mess in, but uh, it's a lot of fun. So remember when we're doing our events that before this, and I'm not gonna open this, this is somebody's, I'll cover their name up, uh, Gina, but uh, you can sit here and you'll open it up and inside on the back here is the book with the directions. There's all the fabric that you're gonna need to complete all the, all the items that are in there. And what we're also going to do is throw in stabilizer for you as well. So um, if you want to know what do I need to do this event? Well, first, you're going to need an embroidery machine. Second, you're going to need a computer to log into Zoom. Now, if you don't have a webcam or you don't want to be on camera, that's fine. You can join the Zoom with audio only. And if you don't have a mic, we can't hear you either. But you want to be sure to be able to hear us. So um, that's part of the fun. Um, but you can log in with Zoom, and laptops are handy, but it is nice to have your sewing machine next to your uh, computer. So when we're following around, they're not in different rooms. So if, uh, if possible, put your computer next to your, next to your sewing room. Open this up. Look at it. Uh, make sure some of the fabrics we reuse, um, not reuse, they're all cut for you. Don't worry, you don't have to cut anything. But uh, there, there's some of the fabrics look very similar, but they're slightly different size. So maybe familiarize yourself uh, with the, the fabric. Not necessary, not required, but it does help things go smoothly um, so that you're familiar. Um, there's that. 
and we are going through, uh, cutting through. So while this is going on, if you want to jump us over to the cutting table, I'm going to grab some of these little items and show you some fun stuff. So this here actually is a Kimberbell pillow. Can you see that? Perfect. So this is a Kimberbell. This is home sweet home or where my homies are. I, I can't remember all the names. They're so cute though. They're so fun. But I got to tell you, all of this stuff was done in the hoop, the applique, all of this, and it tacks down. It's so cute. And they have little charms that they put on. This one actually doesn't have any on there. So uh, they didn't do that. But doing applique, it's neat because they don't just use a satin stitch on all of theirs. And if you look at the, uh, the tree, there's actually a pattern fill in here where it's not just the satin stitch. It actually looks like a tree. You can see it here. The little hearts here have little, actually they're little hearts for the, uh, the outline. Uh, the outline stitch on this tree actually looks like little leaves, which is super cute. And they, they never forget the details. You can see here this uh, little window here has uh, little flowers in it, which is so cute. But what I wanted to show you here is the luminaire I mentioned that we're on over there. All of this quilting here was done in the hoop. And if you notice, it's all cropped on the outside edge of the house here. It's around the tree. This machine is actually a tabletop long arm, and it has the ability for us to go in there and actually finish our projects with finished quilting as well. And that's one of my favorite things about these next generation sewing machines is they're not just sewing machines, they're not just sergers, they're not just embroidery machines, they're also now long arms. And the big thing that made the push for them to be able to do this is the arms are getting bigger and bigger. And that machine there has a 13 inch opening. So you've got a much bigger area to put your, uh, your bulk of fabric so that you've got room for the parts that aren't in the hoop to be hooped as well, which is awesome. So this is one of them. Let me grab another one over here that has some of the stuff that Kimberbell's more known for. So this is a great one. This is uh, Luck of the Gnome. I know this one. So you can see here the pot of gold is actually buttons. Now these were hand sewn, sorry. There is a little bit of four letter word sewing here, but uh, we do have some hand, H-A-N-D, four letters. I wasn't swearing, don't worry, uh, words here. But you can see here they've got a vinyl here in the rainbow, which actually glistens. Can you see that in the camera? The little, ref it's so cool. Uh, the lucky here, and it's got a unique fill. Uh, which is fun. Here's more of the vinyl, but these little legs, look, ah, look at me. I'm a lucky gnome. Uh, the flowers 3D here, you can see that it's a button. They just do some fun things. The little frog here, the little bee that all blends in. May your troubles be less and your blessings be more. There you go. Look at that. That is so cute. Are we done over there, Tim? Cool. So we'll jump back over here. And it is now doing the center of the flowers. So I'm going to tell you, I just did a cardinal sin in the world of embroidery, which is pulling the thread backwards. <laughs> so if you see me doing that, my excuse is I know where the check spring is in these. And I'm certified by every brand that I sell to take them apart. And I can fix them. But I will tell you the proper way to do this. Can you bring it in just a little bit closer? Just a little bit? Perfect. Is to cut your threads. So on a lot of these machines, there's a bobbin winder up top. And whether it's a Bernina, Brother, Janome, Baby Lock, their bobbin winders have cutters on them. Cut it there, pull it through. What this does is make sure that the thread goes through the way that it's designed to be sewn. If you pull it backwards, right here on this, this particular machine where number three is, there's a little wire in there and it's called a check spring. And what it does is, as that take up arm goes up and down, it helps to pull the thread taut so that it doesn't get out of position in the machine. If you pull it backwards, there's a chance that that thread can get wrapped around the uh, check spring in there and it can get pulled out of position or worse bent. And if that happens, you're gonna get some inconsistent embroidery or worse uh, skip stitches and uh, oftentimes this is where the uh, thread break sensor is as well. 
So if you pull it backwards, sometimes you can accidentally pull it out of that sensor. And what happens then is every time you sew, it doesn't know there's thread there. So it tells you to rethread the machine, which is, oops, watch that. I didn't get a chance to use my threader. The threader up here. And I'm going to back it up. So I'm going to come back here. I'm going to go back to the beginning of my color. OK. I'm going to show my full color here. So if you want to switch over here to this one and then hit on, zoom in on the other one. Cool. So what I did here, we have a little button here on this machine where I can touch and I can change the, uh, the thread path up here. And I'm going to stop it here real quick so you can see this. Right now, it's showing just the color we're on. This is showing the entire progress of the design. So if you're interested in seeing how long it's going to go, we can do that. If you're interested to see how long you can leave the machine without it uh, running out of color and you needed to change it, this is a great way to do that. And again, there's our machine step. And let me tighten up our foot here. And there we go. So we'll just let it go and do its thing here. Um, one of the neat things, and I didn't get a chance to show you this, and ma maybe I will. Um, this machine has a really sweet little party trick, and, and I think I will show it to you because it, it is really cool. Um, it has a way for you to know exactly where your design's going to go uh, before you even sew. So it almost is like futuristic. It's got this, this technology that just kind of makes your embroidery appear where it's supposed to be, um, which is a huge hoop because I know, in my experience uh, with embroidery, the hardest part of doing embroidery is making sure that you hoop it in the right spot. And that's where most people run into issues with their uh, embroidery and why they're afraid to put it on maybe some uh, finished goods that might be expensive, maybe a, a, a nice jacket or something like that or a dress is because they don't want to ruin it. And putting embroidery in the wrong spot, you know, you can't always hide that. And having the ability to know where it's going to go before we sew is so important because it really lets us know exactly what's going on. And I'll show you that. I will show you that. That'll be cool. So here we go. It's going to do its little, uh, little what, what do they call those? The pistol and stamen, the middle of a flower? I think that's right. Yeah. Look at that. All the details, all the little stuff. So. Maybe I'll show you what we're doing, but I'm not going to show you what it says. So that's the cool part. So what this is is a little coaster for, uh, for flowers so, or plants, potted plants. So you can take your little uh, plant and put it on uh, this so that uh, if you overwater or some water spills out, it'll get on this and uh, not your table, which is really handy. And it's really cute. But you're not going to know what it says till the end. So I'm going to hide that back here. And no cheating. Don't try and read it. So while that's going, I'm going to jump back over here and uh, show you guys some of the other fun things. So Kimberbell does, I mean, a lot of different projects. They are cutesy. So you got to be into cutesy stuff if you're going to be into Kimberbell. And believe me, a lot of us are. So they don't have a lot of convincing here. Oh, I was going to show you too. All of this custom quilting, can you see the stitching on this block? So all of this was placed with the embroidery machine. Just popped it right on. So I love that. I'm able to finish off all of my projects. This is a neat little pin cushion. It's also a little cake, which is so cool. Uh, this is a Kimberbell project that we did. Actually, I believe they did this at, uh, at their training, which is really cool. This is their little banners. And they have a cute uh, wire stand. And then they've got a bunch of banners that you can hang on these, um, depending on the season. So this has flowers. Uh, on here, it says bloom. Um, and uh, it's a cute little, uh, little banner that you can put up for different seasons, maybe on an entryway, um, you know, maybe in your sewing room just to kind of remind you of stuff. We've got uh, another banner that would hang on this. Uh, this obviously is a, a Christmas or holiday, um, which is really cool. And you can see here they've got all the stitching and the neat bow, and the bow matches the little, the little Kimber embellishments. Um, we also did a uh, notebook. And this is awesome. You had me at sprinkles. Hello. Yeah. Guilty. So right here, we've got a little notebook, but it's got a sweet little cover, um, which is so cute and always fun. And they love, I love how they do their applique, 
but they don't just do applique, it's always different. So right here you can see there's actually stitching that just adds an extra, uh, actually, extra bit of class. So when it's all done, and these are all just fun in the hoop things. Here's a little sampler that we did, and this is playing with wool and felt. And uh, they actually did some uh, chenille up here. So this uh, on the hat is actually chenille, all done in the hoop, uh, which is really, really cool. But you can see here the, uh, the border is awesome, the words, it's just, they're so cute. And all the things that they can do. And you can see all the stippling here, um, all done. But it's just so much fun to be able to make things, have them done. But more importantly, at these events, we want you to have fun and be inspired and, you know, engaging. And so much uh, these times, it's, 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 we feel kind of abandoned and we don't want that. So we've uh, put a lot of time and energy into trying to make these the most amount of fun that you can have. And really just get some tips, tricks, learn some things about uh, some projects that you didn't know about. If you're new to Kimberbell, welcome to the club. If this is uh, maybe your 50th one that you've done, I don't know if there's 50 out there, but uh, you know, welcome back. And uh, we love seeing the familiar faces, but I love seeing new faces too and getting to know you guys. Uh, it's just a lot of fun. So are we just about, we are just about done here. So I will, Come on over. Come on down. So now, we've got what, one more. Oh, one more, maybe a couple more here. We've got a few more left to do. And then we're going to do some words. And when those come on, I'm going to show you my cool little party trick here. And I just love how quiet these new uh, next generation machines are. They're, they're so easy, so easy, which means fun, so much fun. So here we go, cranking out, having fun. So now we're gonna thread up for our words and I think I don't know. Pink or purple? Pink or purple? I can't do yellow because the fabric's yellow. I do have silver, but I don't think that would show up well. So I'm going to do... I'm going to do pink. I think pink will look great. So we're going to come over here. And I like to undo my threads every time that I change. I know it's easy just to cut them and... Uh, leave them up there. But I find sometimes they get tangled. Um, and I don't know if you notice, I'm using a uh, thread stand here. This actually comes with this machine. It's really cool because it allows me to use uh, big cones. So like black and white, I like to buy bigger, bigger cones of. But I want to show you a party trick that we have here. So I'm going to push a button here. And oh, it's not going to let me do it. OK, well, I'll show you at the end. It'll work out. So here we go. We are going to let it sew. And I told you, you guys weren't going to know what it said. So if you guys want to come over here and uh, maybe show this one here. Perfect. So what it says is, I wet my plants. I'm so excited. I wet my plants. <laughs> I love that. So really cute, neat little saying right there. So it's going to be sewing that out. Uh, right over here and as we go um, I will jump over here and I'll grab some of these so I'm gonna tell you if we jump back over here let me put some of these out of the way God, these are so cute so cute so I'm gonna do a little talk about uh, some thread for you so I've been using different threads this is uh, Robus and Anton Isocore, Floriani, this is the Brother Pace Setter thread. Um, I know just by the color of the spools, and I sell them. So uh, makes that really, really easy. But I will tell you, with different threads, these are all a polyester. So typically, embroidery thread is going to be a 40 weight uh, polyester. There is rayon out there, which is a natural fiber. Um, and one of the neat things about Floriani here is 
The benefit of a rayon is that it's shiny. And you'll notice that some of these um, have some sheen to them, but this is shiny. And it mimics rayon. So rayon in, in the past was if you wanted something to really pop, really stand out, you would embroider it with rayon. If you wanted it to be strong and sturdy and hold up, you would use polyester because polyester is color fast, although some of the, uh, the rayons today are. Uh, but polyester, the actual fiber is the color. So there's no way the bleach or anything is going to affect it. It's a much stronger fiber because it's synthetic. They can make it as long as they need to. So uh, it's stronger. So if you're going to do anything that's going to be handled a lot, like a towel, uh, maybe a work shirt um, or a, a favorite jacket or something, I do recommend using polyester versus rayon. It is just a stronger fiber. Um, it's going to hold up better. But this Floriani thread gives you the benefit of having the sheen of a rayon, but the strengthness of a uh, uh, polyester. So these are a 40 weight thread. Um, I do know Brie has the Floriani uh, 30, 360 thread set at home. She has, all, she has all the colors. So typically, a lot of times, she'll be at home sewing out these projects and uh, comes in. So the threads she's probably going to use are Floriani. So if you want to get the colors that she uh, used or, or was working with in the uh, pattern, uh, let us know. Uh, but they are probably going to be Floriani. But we do sell Isocore, which is... Uh, probably, I would say the strongest thread in the market. Um, I think if you're going to do something, God, that's, that's strong. Um, and you want it to just be bulletproof or if it's a project that you're going through a lot of layers and you're having difficulties with that, um, Isocore thread, while it's not the shiniest, it is shiny, um, it's going to give you a great result every time. So Isocore is one of my favorite threads. Um, phenomenal quality. All the threads that I sell are good quality. Um, they just have uh, different aspects. Um, one of the big uh, benefits of the paste setter thread here is all the brother machines have preloaded colors and names and they actually use their own thread. So they have uh, paste setter thread um, and it has uh, the numbers and the names that match up with the, uh, the machine. So this one, the bottom got poked out, but I believe it is I don't even want to guess, but I'll say uh, cornflower blue, but I know that's not it. But if you go into the machine, it'll tell you a certain color, and you can look at the bottom, and it'll have the same number in the same color. But uh, that's all kind of changed because that uh, Luminaire over there and the Baby Lock Solaris now have Floriani and Isocor in, which is awesome. So you can open up a design, tell it you want a different thread brand, and bada boom, bada bing, it's telling you different numbers to use which makes it so, so, so easy. Um, along with this is bobbin thread. And I want to tell you right now, uh, one of the best bobbin threads out there is actually Brother, uh, Brother's Thread and Baby Lock has a, a finishing touch. And it's made by a Japanese company called Ozeki. And you'll never find it anywhere in here except at a Brother or Baby Lock dealer. And that thread is so good for the bobbins, and we love running it in Janome's and uh, the Bernina's as well. Does a wonderful job. But what makes it so special is when you look at the twist on these, and the camera's too far away, it's not going to see this. But um, the twist on the Ozeki thread is so fine. And if you ever think about taking a cord, and the more you, you twist it, the shorter it gets. So the amount of fibers it takes to make one foot of thread is a lot more because they have to twist it so tight. But because of that twisting, as the thread goes through the, the tension disc, it, it's generally a two-ply. And you can tell at the end there'll be two little loose ends. It's a two-ply and bobbin thread. And what that means is as it goes through, it's twisting as it feeds through. And if it goes through on a thick side, it's going to be thicker. But if it pulls to thin, it's going to be pinching less. So your bobbin tension is going to be really inconsistent. With this, it's twisted so fine that no matter where you put it through, it's going to be on a thick or the same side. There is no thick and thin with this. And you can feel it with your finger. There, there's no up and down. It's just smooth. And you get a nice, consistent pull. So uh, that's Ozeki bobbin thread. So it's Brothers bobbin thread. Um, and we sell it, I think it's 1,100 meters. It's finer. They fit more. These are 1,000 meter 
uh, spools. They actually hold more thread on those because it's, it's finer. So, but it's awesome, awesome, awesome thread. But I will tell you, works in all the different machines. So I mentioned earlier today that uh, they come on a memory stick. So you're going to get a stick like this, which is a USB. So uh, most of the new machines by all the brands uh, have USB ports on them. So you can plug it in. Um, the stick that Kimberbell gives you works for every brand, even the brands I don't sell. So if you have a Viking or FAF, um, those formats are on there as well, um, which is just helpful for everyone. We're trying to you know, open this up to anybody. So you don't even have had to have bought your machine from us. We welcome everybody. Um, but the really fun thing about this is being able to be successful with your projects when we're done and so often you leave with projects at, at events that are halfway done and you've got to go home and put the back on and sew the rest. And of course, that's the part you don't know how to do. And we didn't show you how to do it. Well, that's not fair. So we really want to make sure that everything that we do and everything that we try and show you, remember, we're sewing right along with you. So if there's a step that maybe isn't described real well, and I doubt that's the case, but if there is, we're going to be right there with you. So you can watch and see and follow along exactly with what we have. There will be a comment section during our Kimberbell uh, Zoom so that you can type in there. And I normally am not on the camera uh, during these. So I'm actually the one working the camera. Um, I, I stole my, my service tech, uh, my service manager today, Tim. So. Uh, I had to promise he wouldn't be on camera. So Tim is not on camera, but he is there helping me today. So thank you, Tim. I do appreciate it. Um, and for those of you Bernina lovers, he is the one that fixes your Berninas. So when my wife's uh, Bernina 770 comes in, uh, Tim is the one that fixes it for her. So thank you for that, Tim. So I'm going to jump back over here. I think we're, we're almost done with our words here. And uh, we're going to have this uh, pop up, and then I'm going to show you why we trim after the fact. So while uh, I do this next step, I'm going to uh, do my little thing here. We almost done? Oh, it's got some dots, dot, dot, dot. Got to put those in. And then uh, I need some scissors, preferably decent scissors. So can we jump over to, I can do it right here. So when we're over here on this camera, so this is our, our next step here. So what we need to do is actually take this off, take our hoop off. And if we go back here, we're going to take our hoop off and we're actually going to flip it over. So I'm going to have you guys meet me over at the uh, cutting table here and I'm going to show you what I'm going to do. So when we come over here, Normally, I would be cutting all of this stuff away as we go. Perfect. Ah, and they're Kimberbell. I love this. Bree's going to show you their little scissor set. It is her favorite thing, and I'm. <laughs> it's beginning to grow on me. You know, it's, it's kind of a guy thing in their tools, right? And my wife said, why do you need so many screwdrivers? And I said, you don't know how many screws there are. It's crazy. There's tons of them. So I'm going to flip it over. And the reason why we don't cut it away is, it does this placement line kind of first, and then it does sewing. So there might be some pull and some shift that happens. So we don't want that. But this is going to be our outline. And what we're going to do is flip it over, and we're going to put this so that it covers our back completely. And then we're going to tape this down. Remember, always tape. And the key when you tape on the back is going to be two steps. I like to tape on my fabric and then around to the front of my hoop. And the reason why I do this is I have had tape get caught on the bed of the machine and it kind of curled under and magically became part of my embroidery. <laughs> but I found if I roll that tape from my uh, fabric onto the edge of my hoop, that doesn't happen. So neat trick. You're going to learn a lot of those. Is this in there now? Was that kind of out of the view? We're good? Cool. OK, so tape it on and then roll it around. And then that's it. We don't need to really stick it to the hoop. So right now, I've got my uncut thing here. Flip it over. So this is right side up. 
This is now right side up because this is going to be the back of ours. And one of the reasons why I recommend opening your kits would be if you have any wrinkles or anything, you can iron them out. Some of the pieces are, are larger and need to be folded to put in, um, which is nice. And Bree loves this stuff called Shape Flex SF 101. I believe Camberbell has a new uh, stabilizer version of that. We carry the Shape Flex here at the store. We sell it by the yard. Um, so rather than having to buy the little packages and pay a fortune for it, buy it by the yard from us, buy all you need, um, and you press it on. And it, uh, well, it makes cheap fabric feel luxurious. But what it does is it kind of adds some extra body. With the projects we do uh, for these events, it's not really necessary. But I know for uh, her big uh, quilts and stuff, she does, she definitely does use that. So now that we're over here, we're going to slide this on, and I'm going to change this back to the color of my outline. Remember, I, uh, I said I like to use that just in case my colors uh, duplicate. Oh, I left my color over there. I'll go grab it. Uh, just in case it shifts or anything doesn't quite line up, uh, if that line sticks out, it maybe hopefully looks like it should have been there the whole time. So we're going to thread this up. And I'm going to do my tack down. And then we're going to go back over and we're going to do our cutout. And here we go, rocking and rolling, having a, having a blast, having a blast today. So I hope you guys are enjoying this so far. Um, I just wanted to give you a taste of what to expect. I know with some of these virtual events, you kind of seem like you're handed out there on your own and they don't sew along with you. You don't see all the steps. You know, they have like one or two webcams, so they can't really show you anything in detail. And it's really difficult to see what the uh, presenter is trying to do. Um, and hopefully that's not the way it is today. And this is all uh, clear as a bell for you to see what's happening. But it, it makes it so much fun for us to go in here, to be able to sew this out and build it together, but make it easy because sewing should be fun. And these are fun things that we're doing. And it shouldn't be something that you're having to fight with. It shouldn't be something that's frustrating. Uh, you should be able to just step on that gas, follow right along with us. If you have a question, you can type it in the Zoom comments. You can unmute yourself and just say, hey, I got a question. Can you repeat that? And we're happy to go at your pace um, and follow right along. If you have maybe a, a, a I don't want to say a personal question, but maybe something that you think doesn't need to be addressed to everyone, like maybe you don't know where to open a file or you can't figure out which stabilizer to use, um, you can uh, leave a comment and I can reach out to you or you can send an email and, and we can call you. Uh, we do uh, Facebook uh, messaging, uh, which is really easy. We can talk to you through the phones, which is awesome. Or we do uh, through the iPad and Skype and stuff like that with, uh, what is it? FaceTime, FaceTime and Skype. So now we're gonna open this up and you're gonna see that I taped this all down and remember I rolled to the edge so it didn't come out. Now we're going to cut this way. Ah, we're going to do one more step. We'll do one more. We can do this. We'll do one more step, then we'll cut it away. So now, cut this, pull this through, and then I had a silver that's over here that I'm going to pop on. I figured this is going to be a neat color, so we're going to do a little, uh, I, I, I think of this as those, uh, is it a spirograph? Those little uh, cogs that you stuck a stuck a pen in and, and traced around. Uh, do you remember that, Tim? You did the little circle. It's kind of fun. It's kind of cool. You'll see this really neat uh, geometric pattern here. So here we go. My little microphone's popping out of my pocket. And we are off. This is so cool. And this is so neat about these embroidery machines. They make perfect circles. So if I was to do this using ruler work, I would put on a ruler work foot, which is just a free motion foot that's a little thicker. And then it's exactly a quarter inch around the needle. And it's a circle all the way around. Um, so that I would do that. I would take a round ruler and I would sit there and trace every single circle by hand. Or I hit the go button and go, go gadget embroidery machine. And it sews out all of it. And it's perfect and no rulers needed. So now we're gonna do our tack down. So at this point, I'm gonna slide our hoop off and I'm gonna go over here to our cutting table and show you we literally just cut this out. 
So I'm going to flip it over to this side, and this tape tears right off. And I find if you take it from the fabric side and pull it around to the uh, arm part, it's a little easier than trying to unstick it from the, the arm and do that way. Um, if you are uh, into saving your pieces, you can pull them off. Uh, this tape is water soluble, which is great, kind of like our, our batting here. So if you did uh, get some that maybe got stitched in a little bit or anything like that, um, you don't have to worry. It will rinse right out. Uh, when we cut with these, these are uh, applique scissors, and they allow me to kind of separate my layers here. And I will tell you, if you're doing applique, uh, I said applique scissors. They're called duckbill scissors. Quack, quack. So you got you to gotta quack as you cut here. But uh, you can cut. Now, you want to be careful not to tug on your, uh, your fabric here because we don't want to don't want to stretch it and cut into the stitching, but you do want to uh, lift it up. But these allow us to just cut right around so easy, and we don't have to worry about cutting our fabric. And right here at the event, we're going to be cutting right along with you. So there's no excuse for you not to finish a project because we're going to be doing it right with you. Um, and talking away, and a lot of times while the machine is doing um, steps, there's uh, demonstrations that we'll do on uh, some of the Kimberbell stuff. We'll show you maybe some new things that we got in the store and try to, I don't want to say kill time, but uh, kind of talk to you guys uh, about some stuff so that you're not just sitting there watching our screen or watching your hoop do something. We'll, we'll try to keep you entertained, and you've got me and Bree, so you know it's going to be a blast. Um, we always keep it light and fun, and like I said with Zoom, if you guys feel comfortable being on camera, you can leave it on. I will say most of us have been. Um, it is a private Zoom uh, room, uh, so it's not open to the public, which is, uh, which is good. And you can run right through, and here we go. I'm almost done with this back side here, and then we'll move on to the front and cut it away. And get this last little bit here. How about that? There we go. So now it's perfectly cut out. We'll jump over here and pull our tapes off and kind of do the same thing on the front. Get this out of the way and cut, cut, cut a roo. And do our same thing. And this time I am cutting the uh, the top and the batting at the same time. And I will say that uh, they do sell uh, embroidery batting, um, which this is. It's a little bit more consistent. It's a little denser. If you felt it, you'd say, ooh, that looks like some nice batting. But the nice thing about it, too, is it cuts away really easy. And that I do like, especially when we're trying to do like an, a, uh, an applique here. Um, when we're needing to cut the batting out, uh, maybe if you were doing trapunto or some of those other techniques with the embroidery, not so much stuffing it in the old way, but how it actually sews through it and then you cut it away and then it tacks down afterwards. If you haven't done that before, really fun, neat technique. Um, and as we go through, we'll probably run into that at some of these. This is kind of a trapunto, actually, now that I say it, because we are stuffing the inside here, which is always a nice thing. You got to have something to absorb our overflowing water because we love giving our plants so much water that it runs all over the table. I'm just kidding. Hopefully we're not doing that. But in case you accidentally do, we have this beautiful Kimberbell I wet my plants 
pot, uh, what do they, what would they call this? A plant, plant coaster? You can leave a comment down below. <laughs> if you think you know what they would call this, uh, let me know. But we are just about done here. I've got just a couple more clips. That we go. Is my head in the way, Tim? No. Good. I've got a neat video that I'm uploading, uh, I think it's neat, uh, on uh, piecing. So actually kind of the opposite of the embroidery that we're doing here, but actually talking about uh, um, how to do this, uh, the piecing part, putting all your, your, your pieces together to make your blocks and some tips and tricks and technology out there to help you along with this. So I'm going to put this back on. I'm going to cut my thread here. I'm going to wake up my screen. Pull this right on through. Thread her up. And then we're going to do our final outline. And then we'll be done. Pop this over and thread her up. And hit our go button and now it's going to do the final tack down and this will be this will be it so when this is done we are done with this project so while this is going um, I'm not saying bye yet uh, we're still here but uh, while this is going uh, I'm going to hoop up another hoop because uh, right here real quick I want to show you one thing that really makes this machine stand out and uh, it's something that I love uh, but I need to have a fresh hoop to, uh, to show you this. So well, I'll just throw some fabric in here. We don't need a whole new thing. And I'm wondering, well, I'll just use this. So this is not best hoop practices. Believe me. Believe me, I know. But it will get our point across. So Some little little tails, and I'll I'll get rid of this tape here, and I'll kind of clean up my mess so I don't get in trouble later. I was fine clean as you go. I uh, did a uh, a fun. We were a top Bernina dealer this year, and we did a Century Club, and it's their big award for their top dealers uh, in the country, and they did a really neat uh, virtual cooking show. And it was kind of cool. I think other cooks do this, but he always had a little bucket. And as we chopped and did things, we just threw it in the bucket. And it was neat because when we were done, I didn't have to scrape stuff off. It was already done. I just dumped the bucket. And I mean, cleanup was a breeze. It was neat little, uh, little thing that's like plainly obvious. Like, <laughs> I don't think I discovered, it's like I discovered the wheel or something. But uh, blew my mind. It was su such a neat thing. But I had a blast doing that. And it was fun because, uh, the president of Bernina was there. Mr. Ulti in Switzerland gave us a, gave us a, a cheers. And uh, it, was, it was a lot of fun to, to be a part of that. And it's, it's really fun to be a, a big, big Bernina dealer and get recognized. But um, we're sewing out, doing our outline here. And I'm going to run, let me, I'm going to walk in front of this camera here real quick. And I'll show you one last thing. This is actually, I got a couple. Let me grab. So these are more uh, Kimberbell things. Just show you some fun stuff. And we really do this. And by we, I mean Brie. <laughs> I, I can't take credit for all this. But I did do this. You saw me. Evidence, right? Uh, this is really fun. I, I don't know where the little light switch is on this. It is so cute. I just felt it. I just felt it. Let me see if it's going to work. It might not. These have little batteries in them, and they, they tend to die. But let me see. They're dead. I'll get... I'll get uh, I'll get a battery for the event. So when we do our event, this will work. 
But this is a uh, spooky town, or I don't know what it's called. Uh, I should know this. I Please forgive me. Um, comment down below if you know what it is. But uh, it's really, really cool. But there's little lights on this, and it just it, it lights up. Like, who would have thought of putting uh, these neat little uh, LED lights with a pillow? But they do these little bench pillows, and they're really easy, maybe in a welcome area or on your couch, to swap out. And we've done, uh, we had uh, two of them that I showed here, one maybe for Valentine's, this one obviously for Halloween, which is coming up. Um, and I think our next uh, Kimberbell event uh, might be a Kimberbell. Check, check and see. We mix them up to do different ones. Uh, and uh, this is a, uh, let me pull this one out. This one is so cool. And I, I love how they do this. They've got the, uh, the soda can. I'll call it a Coke can. They got the Coke can or bottle can. It's a bottle. You can see the straw in here. Um, this is actually done in the block. And let me see if I can find a pinwheel. This one might not have one. Well, one of the other ones does. But you can see all of this individual quilting was done uh, on the embroidery machine. And at our events, we show you how we do all this stuff, which is great. Um, this pattern here um, was actually sent over from a screenshot, and I believe the hamburger was as well, um, uh, just from a phone and sent over to the machine. And this machine and the uh, Baby Lock Solaris and the Brother Luminaire actually will digitize, which means that they'll take a photo, and most photos that are out there are called a JPG. And this machine reads that, that picture language, and it converts it into thread right in the machine. So you don't need a computer. You don't need you know, skill. You really don't need anything to be able to take these machines here and finish them off. And that's what I say about next generation. In the old days, you used to have to buy all your embroidery designs. And believe me, Kimberbell still wants you to do that. But uh, now you can create your own. So a lot of times, there's, you can't find just the right thing that you want. And with this, we can actually create our own thing. So finding a, a quilt pattern of a hamburger, I would guess, is probably pretty difficult. But we just took a screenshot and sent it right over to the machine, and it sewed it out, um, which makes it really easy. Um, all of the sashing here was done uh, with the quilting. Let me see here. I think one of these has a pinwheel on it. Is this? Oh, this is an unstuffed pillow. So if you ever want to know what a pillow looks like unstuffed, ta-da! You can never say you never saw an unstuffed Kimberbell bench pillow because there it is. But I don't want to take all of Bree's samples away from her. So I'm going to put this, these, these ones back. And let me see. But it's just a lot of fun. And I encourage you guys, sign up, call the store. If you haven't signed up yet, uh, call the store, 503-775-7283, and we will uh, get you the kit, uh, get you uh, the Zoom password to go into our, our Zoom and get you all set up with everything that you need. Um, and here we are, sewing along with our project, and you can see how much fun this is and how easy it is with us doing the project along with you. And that's what really makes this so special, is even at our big events, we'll get up there, we'll talk about some stuff, it's fun, you know, there's 50, 100 people in a room, which obviously isn't happening right now, but we don't actually sew out the project. They click through the steps, you have a little book that you flip through, sometimes you can keep the book, sometimes you can't, this book is yours, it's yours, you can repeat it, you have the designs, you can cut your own fabric, make your own again and again, as many as you want, but we're actually doing this with you. And at the events, we're up running around helping you do the steps, but we're not there along with you. And that's kind of a neat thing about this, is while we don't get the complete social thing, we're not high-fiving and eating lunch together and, and really getting to know each other on that level, but we're actually sewing. We're down to business, having fun, and making sure that you leave with a successful project. And that's the most important thing that I see. So. Uh, as this goes through, we're going to let this finish up. Um, I do want to thank you for sticking through with this. I know, uh, uh, I know when you're scrolling face uh, Facebook, you don't, uh, 
you have other places you could be, and I want to thank if you stuck around to see this part. Um, thank you very much. Um, as a small business, it means the world to us. And as we go, this is just going to finish off the outline here. And this, again, is just water soluble. So when you're done, you're actually going to put it in water. And you're just going to submerge it in that this stabilizer is actually made out of cornstarch. And where did I put this? And it just melts away. So if you're using warm water, uh, it goes faster. Cold water, it will work. I've had people say put a uh, thick fabric softener in there, and it makes it melt away. I'm not recommending that because I haven't tried it myself. Um, but uh, just put it in warm water, and it'll melt away. Um, if you don't want to melt the whole thing away, you can get a Q-tip and just stick some uh, uh, water on it and just run it around the outside edge here. And that way you can use the rest of your stabilizer here um, for another project um, if you want. I don't recommend uh, reusing the whole piece. It's going to have a big hole in the middle. But uh, the extra little bits. My teacher, Sandy, has a neat trick. Uh, she uh, melts it in water and shakes it up and then uses it as a uh, starch. Be careful with that, though, because there is no preservatives in it. So uh, it can uh, deteriorate or I don't want to say rot, but, but rot. Uh, over time, so just, just be aware. You definitely don't want to be spraying uh, mold or whatever is growing in there on your, on your stuff. But uh, it is a neat way to, to kind of stabilize it. Another thing that Kimberbell does, I forgot to mention it, they give SVGs for a lot of these patterns. I didn't uh, get a chance to look at the stick to see if they did for this. But what that means is an SVG is a cut file for the little cutters. And what this will do is give you these uh, applique pieces. So if you do the shape flex trick, which uh, Brie will show you all about, um, you can do these and have the machine cut them so that you don't have to sit there like me trimming out all this stuff. You'd still have to do it probably for the batting, but uh, not for the uh, tops. And when you're doing uh, a lot of these appliques with the little blocks and stuff, it's so much easier. You know, where this really hit me with the cutters was I've got some kids, and they had onesies, and we're at Gymboree. They're not around. Look at that. Look how old I am. Gymboree. Remember back when? Well, uh, I was at Gymboree, and they had all these shirts, and they were closing them out at like six bucks. And they were like little onesies. And I'm like, well, that's cheap for a onesie. But then I'm looking at it, and it had an entire applique little raccoon, and it had all kinds of animals on it. And I'm like, how are they doing this every time it cuts and places? They're in there cutting away all these pieces, and, and then it dawned on me, they don't cut anything. It's already cut. So the only time they're out is the time it takes to put it down, and then it to stitch it. So you look at how much time it saves, and with applique, one of the big reasons why I like applique is I don't have to get a sewing machine to fill in all this yellow going back and forth for probably an hour. I can actually just put yellow fabric down, and it's all done. It's so much easier. So. Really, really cool. We've got, <clears throat> what, about two minutes left here, and then we'll be done. And then I'm going to show you our party trick, and then I'm going to invite you to come to our next Kimberbell. The best part about it is you're not going to have to look at me. You're going to get to look at Bree. So this will be kind of the last time that you see me. I'll be behind the scenes. I might poke in sometime, but... Uh, Bree's the one that does these Kimberbells. She does an amazing job. Uh, she's the one that's in most of the Facebook videos that aren't me um, online that you see. And uh, a lot of fun, but she does this. And that's the big thing that I, I love about this is we're not reading some book like right before doing this. We actually make these and we do these. And that's why I hear from more and more people as they get exposed to my company that we know more about these machines than a lot of other dealers. And I kind of take that as a source of pride because that is our job. Our job isn't to sell machines. It's to help you learn and get the most out of the one that you did buy. And we want to make sure that you're using it to the most amount. And when I show you this trick, it's going to literally blow your mind because it solves the biggest problem that we have with embroidery. And you're going to see it all happen right before your eyes, which is so cool. So we are just about done. Wow, this went pretty quick. This went really quick. Look at that. And I love this thread stand. It's so handy. It's 
So anyone who did our first Kimberbell event, this looks very familiar because this is exactly one of the projects that we did. Um, and it's just a fun, fun way to, to sit and hang out and sew together and get an opportunity to maybe learn some new techniques, maybe, maybe get some social aspect, which is always great. And uh, here we go, we're all done. Plays its great little tune to let me know that I'm done. And you can see here it's all, all finished off. If I wanted to for this last one, I could have wound a bobbin of purple and not had any of the white, but I don't care, it's the bottom part of it. But there's my, my finished project here. And I would just, uh, me, myself, I just wet a Q-tip around the outside edge here and just push it to pop it out. But I'm gonna show you one thing here that'll blow your mind. So the hardest part about doing embroidery is placement. And how do I know where it's gonna go? Well, I'll tell you, this machine here has a hidden party trick. And can you zoom in really close on this? It has a projector. So can you see that, Tim? So I can literally see where this is gonna go on my hoop, my fabric, before I even sew it out. And you can see here that beautiful geometric thing I was talking about, there it is. So you can literally see where it's gonna go. So I can move my design over. If it's not where I think I need it, I can move it. And you can see it move right there. So I can line everything up exactly where it needs to be. So that's what really makes these Luminaire and Solaris the next generation embroidery machine is they solve the problem of how do I know where it's going? And right here it is. So that's a neat thing. Uh, but when we're doing these, we're gonna do demonstrations. We're gonna show you how to do this. But more importantly, you're gonna get an opportunity to sew right along with us, have success, and get a very fun, pain-free experience on your embroidery machine. I guarantee you, you're gonna learn something. I guarantee you, you're gonna have a lot of fun. And I guarantee you, you're gonna wanna sign up for our next one too. So give us a call, 503-775-7283. Again, I wanna thank you for sticking through it with me. I know uh, I'm a ball of energy. People say that, and I'm a little much for some people, but uh, no, no one ever said you're not enough energy. So, but uh, with that, thank you so much. God bless, and we'll see you at our next Kimberbell event. Bye-bye.